Okay, for our first message this morning, it'll be brought to us by Mr. Mark McGarvey. His title is entitled, What is the Mark of the Beast? Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see lots of numbers here. It's good to see Lori here, too. Been praying for you a lot. So, um, as you read in the Bible, the end of this present age before the return of Christ is going to be an intense period of deception and war. But we need to understand these times. We um, have to be watching world events and keeping an eye on what our government is doing, but also what the governments of the world are doing in the various principal principalities, prime ministers, presidents, and so on. So with that in mind, let's just turn to a couple of scriptures. Uh, first, we'll go to Luke 21, verse 36. Luke 21, 36. Do you have that? Rick? And this is uh, Jesus speaking to his disciples and his followers. And he just simply says, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus himself tells us to watch and pray. Be persistent in our faith that he will return and that we will be worthy to stand before him. And in Matthew 22... 24 verses 4 and 5 he says more of the same Matthew 24 verses 4 and 5 <clears throat> Jesus speaking to his disciples they're asking him questions and about the, the uh, end times and the tribulation and verse 4 and Jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many and he tells us that even churches and other so-called Christians, um, Christian leaders, will try to deceive us and anyone who will believe them in their stories. And I looked at, I, I saw this uh, Hillsong documentary recently. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It was released last year. And Hillsong are a, an Australian church, mega church, um, and they have an annual income of like $100 million and have done for... 10, 15 years, <coughs> massive church, and they do some very beautiful music. They're, we sing some of their, we play some of their stuff, but uh, I couldn't believe how much corruption and deception was going on in that church, uh, from the high up, lower down, um, and that's what it came down to in the end, was the money. Money, 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 make as much money as we can from the concerts, from the albums we release, um, but the union had some corrupt leaders and the, the, the college they had, cold, not taking care of students. And, and the one uh, preacher they had in, in New York, up there on the stage, preaching with his holes in his jeans, but wearing $5,000 sneakers and a $15,000 Gucci hoodie, if you don't mind. Oh, where's that money coming from? Not from him. And, and then he's also married with two kids, but having three, three affairs on the side. So when you have leaders like this who are full of deception, what they're saying on stage, is it really from God? Is it inspired? The likes of him, I don't think so. So the, the Bible has to be our anchor at this time. The Holy Bible has to be an anchor. Right? Follows, follow God's word and be led by the Holy Spirit to be ready for the time of the end. So what is the mark of the beast? And what does it mean to us today? Is it possible that, it's, that we already have it? What will it look like? When will it happen? What's the time frame? And how do we prepare ourselves when it does happen? So over the years, I've heard people say, oh, 
you know, it's the barcode that's on everything, on the food items, the grocery store, on clothing, <coughs> on, your, on your shoes even. Um, some say it's nanotechnology. Uh, some said it's, it's tattoos. I don't see how that could be. Or even, or even uh, regular vaccinations, which they, they pump our kids full of like 70 different vaccinations here in America, which is bang out of order. You don't need that many vaccinations for a, a baby up to the age of two. Um, or even the COVID-19 vaccine. You know, these are the things I've heard over the years. And that one, the COVID-19 vaccine, they were really saying that was the mark of the beast. Big time, people I work with, say, oh, that's got to be it, doesn't it? Huh? So let's go. I want you to keep a bookmark in Revelation chapter 13 today because we're going back and forth in Revelation 13 because this is where we talk about the beast and the mark of the beast. So let's go to Revelation chapter 13. And let's begin in verses 1 through 4. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I'll skip down here at the end of this verse. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So this great power... This government arises, and the leader of this empire or territory or conglomerate of countries is a very charismatic leader, as we'll read in other verses here. But he gets his power from the dragon, Satan. The world marvels, as it says in verse 4, who is like the, be the beast, who is able to make war with him. In other words, who can take him on militarily? If he's this powerful, what does this mean for America? Has America declined at this point? Because this is a few years in the future. There's many prophecies that haven't come to pass yet. So, in other words, if anyone is, is militarily not able to stand up to him, and America is the, the greatest superpower on Earth right now with an arsenal of nuclear weapons and every kind of missile, laser-guided missiles, and, uh, and everything you can think of, what's going to happen to America? now and then. But there's also another scripture that I mentioned in one of my messages last fall, and it perfectly ties into what John wrote in Revelation. And it's from someone you don't really usually tie in with prophecy. It's from the Apostle Paul. And it's back in, uh, it was written by Paul when he wrote the church in Th Thessalonica, or as I used to call it, Thessalonica, but I think it's Thessalonica, that's a mouthful right there in Greece. Um, and it's Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. Let's start there first. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the people in Thessalonica. Uh, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Is that up there? There you go. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So notice how he sits in the temple. Because there's many scriptures that we read of that show that the temple of God in Jerusalem we will be rebuilt before the time of the end. Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 11 are a couple of scriptures to to show you that. Um, but this is talking about the, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Is this the beast? Is this the guy, the same guy? Let's read on. Uh, second Thess 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 Ugh, mouthful. <laughs> second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12 now. Reading on.
For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So this man, this man of sin, son of perdition, will deceive the world with signs and wonders and his lying tongue and those who have no biblical grounding, as it says here, no understanding of the truth, that, are, uh, that we know, the truth that we know, will believe him and everything that he says. If you have no grounding in the Bible and the truth, then you're gullible and will believe anything, especially if this lion fool is, is performing miracles and wonders. I mean, it, it's easy to do. Look at, look at what David Koresh did in Waco. He just, he said stuff, claimed he was, he was the Messiah, and had several hundred people following him. We know how that ended. So, we get a picture of this leader from, from Paul, of all people, um, and this beast power and how it's backed up by the dragon, by Satan. So let's go back to another uh, prophetic uh, scripture, back to the book of Daniel, because Daniel ties in Revelation time and time again. And let's look at Daniel chapter 7 and verses, let's start in verses 7 through 8 first of all. Daniel chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. So after this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. See, see uh, Daniel's been, been given these visions by God, and he, he gets visions of these, these four beasts. And as we come to read, and, and as we've, we've seen booklets, we've read stuff about this over the years, um, the first beast uh, was, was uh, um, Belshazzar, the, the king at the time of Babylon. The second was Persia. The third was the Greeks. And the fourth would be the Roman Empire. So, and this dreadful beast that Daniel's trying to describe because he's never seen anything like it. The other ones, you know, he had leopards and bears and lions. This one he can't describe. And artist renditions have shown a dinosaur over the years. But a, a massive and dreadful beast that he cannot believe. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. So this beast that uh, Daniel dreams and sees is very similar to the one we read about in Revelation chapter 13. And this 11th horn, this other little horn that Daniel described that comes up through the middle of the other 10 is a leader separate from the other 10. He speaks pompous words. Notice how it says that in verse 8. So let's skip down a few verses to Daniel chapter 7 and verses 23 through 25, and Daniel continues with this same beast. Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 through 25 now. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a... And this is Daniel. He, he, asked, he asked an angel, what is it I'm seeing here? Can you please help me out? What is this beast that's disturbing me? And he tells him, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth which shall be different from all other kingdoms and shall, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise in this kingdom and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first one and shall subdue three kings 
and he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. So this terrible beast has similarities to the beast we mentioned in Revelation chapter 13. Another common theme repeated in both Daniel and Revelation is that the saints will be persecuted. And who are the saints? Well, it's basically those who still keep the commandments of God, those who honor his Sabbath and holy days. And that's us. We're a church of God and the other churches of God on earth. We do all those things. And this ruler will rule for a time, times, and half a time. Nearly all biblical scholars agree that this is three and a half years. A time, one year, times, two years, and half a time, half a year. So three and a half years. And it's the last three and a half years before the return of Christ. Because this beast, this fourth beast of Daniel, this beast of the end time described by John, is only destroyed by the returning Christ. So that gives us a bit of a time scale to some extent. It's not perfect. It's not how we want it. You kind of go in reverse, going backwards. But this fourth beast is only destroyed by Christ himself. So how do all these things tie in to the mark of the beast? Well, let's go back to Revelation chapter 13. Let's continue reading in verses 5 through 8. Revelation chapter 13 verses 5 through 8. And John continues here with his visions. And he was given a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. What's 42 months? Three and a half years. Okay? Plain as day. It's right there. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. What did Daniel say? He speaks with pompous words. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So we, have a, we notice a couple of things here. 42 months, like I said, three and a half years. His mouth, his mouth speaking great things and blasphemies is very similar to those pompous words that Daniel wrote. We read in Daniel 7. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them, but not all the saints. Let's take a little sidetrack here, but this is very important. This, is very, this ties in. The saints are persecuted. God's church, God's people are persecuted in the end times. But... Let's go back here, one chapter, uh, yeah, chapter 12, verses 13 through 17, the end of the previous chapter, chapter 12, Revelation 12, let's look at verses 13 through 17. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, the dragon being Satan, he persecuted the woman, and who was the woman? That's the church of God who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she was nourished for a time and times and half a time. There it is again, three and a half years. She was nourished in the wilderness for a time, times and half a time. Very important. And from the presence of the serpent, the Satan, so the serpent spewed, spewed water out of his mouth. This has come to be known as military uh, soldiers, armies, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, these armies, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. So wherever God's people are in this wilderness area, wherever that may be, Satan goes after them directly. And inspires some army or military to go after them. But God intervenes, the devoured. Maybe similar to what happened with Moses and the Israelites when um, that army was devoured, the op earth opened up and took them all in. And the 
dragon was enraged with the woman, really mad now, because the people he sent out to kill them, kill these people, are gone. What can he do? And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Okay, if I'm not going to get them, I'm going to get the rest of them. We're going to kill them all, he says. Who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So some of the churches of God, people's, God's people, will be spared by the end, the end of tribulation, the last three and a half years. Will that be some of us? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. When the time comes, I guess we'll know. Things will happen. But persecution against Christians in general, but especially those of us who believe like we believe, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not going to be good. So, let's go back. And, and you know, some of the saints, some of God's people, will be supernaturally protected during this, this, uh, this end time. The three and a half years, the last three and a half years before Christ's return, it's right here. It's going to happen, unfortunately. You see, unfortunately, because it's going to be horrific, but that's just the way it is. It's going to happen. So if we go back, back over to Revelation 13, let's conclude uh, with verses 11 through 18. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18 now. Then I, then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. Okay, you can go back to... Have you got it there, Brian? <coughs> Revelation 13, verses 11 through 18. It's not fair to you guys if, if it's not up there. You can follow along better. No, no, no. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 through 18. Do you not have those? Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So verse 11. Uh, can you pull it up? Yeah, verse, uh, verse 11. Okay, so then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. How unbelievable is this? That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Let's, let's, let's finish off this, this chapter and go through to verse 18. Verse 16, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except, except one who has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. Or it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So this second beast, who is the false prophet, causes all, great and small, rich and poor, to worship the first beast. The two beasts in tandem, bringing down fire from heaven, no less. No wonder the world will, mar will marvel at this and look at and look at verse 15 like i said the image speaks so satan is able to get this image whatever maybe there's one big image in this territory this this empire one massive image and satan is able to get that image to speak to the people it's incredible so when you have all this kind of stuff going on no wonder people will be deceived and will follow and will worship this guy unbelievable stuff 
But we've got to remember, just as the two witnesses who are over in Jerusalem at the same time um, are protected by God, but God allows them to perform great signs and wonders, Satan works his signs and wonders through his two beasts in the same tandem to make sure the, the world still follows them and follows his ways. They get their power and are driven by the dragon, Satan. But there's one more thing that needs to be addressed that ties all this together and the mark of the beast at the end time. What is this one thing? Well, there's a couple of scriptures, and I hope, Brian, you got this, uh, these ones I sent this morning, a couple more scriptures just to tie up everything. Uh, this is um, Matthew chapter 24 uh, and verses 5 through 8. This is Jesus again describing what's going to happen towards the time of the end. Matthew chapter 24 verses 5 through 8. Matthew 24, there you go. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. Jesus again telling his disciples what will happen at the time of the end. The beginning of sorrows and as we'll see in Revelation chapter 6 the riding of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So let's go there. Revelation chapter 6 Because this ties into everything I've been talking about today. Revelation chapter 6, verses 7 through 8. This is critical to the timeline because, as you read in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 7, when the, the, the seals are, be op are being opened before John, he gets to see what's going on. <coughs> the fourth seal, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat in it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with a sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. So, what these two verses show is the timeline for the mark of the beast. 25% of the world will be killed by wars, famines, pestilences, disease. A simple, a more, maybe a more ex expanded version of the likes of COVID-19, but more savage, more severe. So in, in current terms, today's numbers, that's two billion people, approximately two billion people. So that happens in the timeline of the book of Revelation. A quarter of the earth has to die first in these various things before this beast power takes hold and starts his reign. Then, when that happens, it'll be obvious, millions of people will be dying around the world. It'll be obvious. Here comes the beast power, this charismatic leader who can bring the world together peacefully. He'll say, look at me, look what I can do. I can bring peace to this earth. We're killing ourselves with war and destruction. Look at me, come to me, I'll show you what we can do. He'll be able to perform signs and wonders. The false prophet will be there by his side, bringing down fire from heaven. Who's not going to believe this guy when you're dying and your people, your family's dead, your house is burnt to the ground, all your relatives are dead, people are dying on the streets from disease and so on. The country, is your country that you're from is destroyed. Of course you're going to believe this guy who's performing miracles. But he's the beast and the false prophet speaking lies and deception and all horrible things. But that's the timeline you can go by now, you see. I know it's kind of working in reverse, and there's not much to go on, but when 25%, a quarter of the earth, has been killed, then the time is coming. So, this is how we know that the mark of the beast has not already happened. It cannot happen until this time. Many prophecies are to be filled yet, about, about a quarter of human life will be killed 
Some of the saints will be supernaturally protected, and these events of revelation will then take place. Revelation 13. So if you go back to Revelation chapter 13 and look at verses 16 and 17 again, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 and 17, just the, the last couple of verses here, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except the one who has the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So this could be an implant. That's my belief. It'll be some kind of implant in the hand or wrist, or up in the side of the head. But there's also, but it could, it could also be um, technology, technologies that we haven't seen yet. There's also these these glasses you can get that are made by Google or Amazon or someone that that can give readouts of stuff on the on the glasses. It could be something like that that you wear. It can give you all kinds of different things. It, it could be an implant. It could be technology we just haven't seen yet. Could it be cell phones? Possible. We just don't know. But no one can buy or sell unless you have this mark and worship the image of the beast. If you're wondering how could anyone worship an image, if this man of sin and this false prophet are performing signs and wonders, People will treat them like they are gods. It's not hard to imagine. And back when John wrote this 2,000 years ago, it wasn't hard to imagine because the Roman Empire had the people worship their images of, of their various Caesars and their various leaders. And it could happen. If Adolf Hitler had put an image of himself up in Germany, people would have bowed before that and worshipped him. And Joseph Stalin in Russia too. So when someone is that... Um, are leaders, leaders that are that deceptive and able to perform signs and wonders, they can pretty much do whatever they want, and people will do it. So, that's pretty much how it's going to happen. That will be the mark of the beast. And that puts us in a shtup, in the sense of either bow down and worship that thing, cannot buy or sell. Time to grow gardens. Huh? But it's also the same as what happened in Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. Now, God supernaturally protected them in the, the fiery furnace, and they lived. But that's not, not always going to happen to God's people. So, these times, those times yet to come, are going to be trying times. I mean, really trying times. People all around us will be dying. We'll be persecuted, thrown in jail, even executed. It's going to be horrific. <coughs> but God has blessed us with his spirit and that spirit discerns the signs of the times the Holy Spirit that God has given us freely with the mind of Christ working in us will be able to see through the deception Okay, we have to hold out because people will depend on us we could save lives. We could bring more people to Christ. Bring new people to Christ. Because no matter what the beast and the false prophet are doing and saying, we'll be able to get the word out still. Whether it be electronically or by paper, just the old-fashioned way with the Bible itself, we'll be able to get the word out and keep preaching. Whether it be in our own houses, in our own living room, whatever, in a shed, We'll still be able to get the word of God out to, to those, and that's what it says in the book of Revelation a few scriptures later. So, and we'll be able to get the word out and tell everyone that can hear us, Christ is coming back. He'll be here soon. Hang on. Wait for him. That'll be on us. It'll be our responsibility to do that. And we'll have to keep preaching from God's holy book, the Bible. So, in conclusion, although we must pray, thy kingdom come, let's also pray for God's protection on us to guide us through these times, the current times and the times to come, and to never lose sight of the kingdom of God. Let's read the Bible, let's pray about it, and God will spare us. God will save us. 
let's pray, thy kingdom come.